Hi class, this is Mrs. Cribb and this is the lecture on Chapter 4A. Um, you should have a copy of the notes in front of you. If you don't, you need to pause the, the video and go ahead and print them out so we can go through them. All right, I want you to notice first of all, this is the name of the chapters Prezi and the study stack that's located right here. Remember that you can just click on that study stack and it should take you to that particular study stack and in that study stack I uh, have all the terms you're going to be needing for this chapter. So scanning tunneling microscope, um, the next card, whatever else you want to do. Um, so anyway, there's the study stack for your use here. So let's go back to this Prezi. Alright, now I have a copy of the notes inside the Prezi. So chapter 4 notes. Development of the atomic model. model. The scanning tunneling microscope, STM, allows us to see atoms. It shows the surface of objects at the atomic level. So here's an example. Here's a kind of a picture of one and you see the tunneling electrons trying to look at the surface here. And This is an example image using a scanning tunneling microscope. We're not going to have to do much else, just what it is. Early thoughts on the structure of matter. Democritus, which I may have talked to you about in the past, there's Democritus and there's Aristotle. Both of these guys are Greek philosophers. Um, lived Democritus, Democritus lived around 460 to 370 BC. You don't have to know the exact date, just kind of giving you a ballpark time frame. Aristotle lived in the same general time. Democritus said matter contained definite particles that could not be divided infinitely without losing their properties and that became the particle theory of matter. So Democritus's ideas became the particle theory of matter. And he coined the term atom because he used the term atomos. That's where we get the term atom from to represent the smallest particles. And in his ideas there would be space between the atoms and the particles. So Democritus was an atomist who came up with a particle theory of matter. Aristotle came up with what became the continuous theory of matter. And this theory states that matter could be continuously subdivided without end, like going forever and ever and ever without changing its properties and there would be no space between the particles. That's what he believed and this he was another Greek philosopher who lived the same time as Democritus. Aristotle kind of won the argument. We believe the wrong thing for over 2,000 years. And then late in the, it says the first real experimental support for this was obtained in the late 1700s when we realized that uh, the continuous theory was wrong. Okay, so that's Democritus and Aristotle. Now the law of definite composition is a new another idea. Every compound is formed of elements combined in specific ratios by mass. A ratio, you know, just like two to three, and that are unique for that compound. Here's an example, and I'm going to uh, write on your notes um, a PDF for the notes on this. So let me pull that up. Here we go. Just a second. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay, here's an example. Um, Go. Now, if you have 9 grams of water, it usually gives you, um, 9 grams of water gives you 9 grams of oxygen and 1 gram of hydrogen. That doesn't make any sense. 9 grams of water gives you 8 grams of oxygen and 1 gram of hydrogen. That must be a problem in my notes. So this is the ratio, an 8 to 1 ratio, 8 grams of hydrogen to 1 gram of oxygen. That always stays true, 8 to 1. So if I have 18 grams of, of water, that means 9 times 2 gave me 18, I should have twice as much oxygen or 16 grams of oxygen and twice as much hydrogen or 2 grams of hydrogen. Notice 16 plus 2 equals 18. Now if I have 24 grams of oxygen, okay, then the ratios still have to be identical. So if I have 24 grams of oxygen, that's 8 times 3. So 1 times 3 would be 3 grams of um, hydrogen and then add that together, that's 27 grams of water. So 9 times 3 gave me 27. The ratio, an 8 to 1 ratio, stayed exactly the same each time. That is all the law of definite composition is. Just keeping that ratio the same. Okay, let's go back to the Prezi. All 
Right. The first experimental model is Dalton's atomic model, and um, we have a few of those in the in the classroom. Pictures of them. They're just spheres. Some of you may have made those for me in the past. Dalton. There's a picture of Dalton. Created this model, and it says an atom is an indivisible. In invisible sphere of uniform density. That just means that the density is exactly the same. Like your uniforms are supposed to be the same, right? Okay. All the atoms of the same element have the same mass. So all hydrogen atoms have the same exact mass of hydrogen. All oxygen atoms have the same mass. And, uh, and the atoms combine in the fixed ratios to form compounds. So H2O, it, the atoms combine two hydrogens, one oxygen, every time to form the compound water. That's the fixed ratio. It doesn't change. We don't have H2O2 that forms water. H2O2 forms peroxide. So the atoms combine in fixed ratios to form the same compound. Okay, that's Dalton. And then we came, came about the discovery of the electron. That's Thomson's model, the plum pudding model. Um, Alessandro Volta invented an electric battery and he allowed scientists to study how matter behaves in the presence of an electrical current. So scientists discovered cathode rays and um, these cathode rays were end up, ended up being um, emissions from the cathode, the negative electrode in a discharge tube. And so we're going to watch go back to a different Prezi, the Prezi on Chemistry 4A, the atom model, just so we can see uh, a video on that. And I'm not going to, I'm going to flip back and forth between the two model, the two Prezi's for a moment. Okay. This one is on the atom model and has all the videos in it. In the beginning, God. And here again are the study stack terms that you need for this chapter. There's Dalton's model. Physical science had to watch that before. We don't have to watch it. So let's watch this. Okay, we're going to see. Okay. Shoot, I forgot to check and see if that was going to work. Okay, let's see. I may have to go back through all of that. 